Jennifer Caldwell. I'm a sophomore majoring in physics at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. I enjoy long walks on the beach, singing, dancing, and hanging with my friend Ashley. Hey, my name is... Okay, back to me. I'm here at Harvard working for the summer in Benny Manahara's lab. Here is my lab, and there are some books in my lab. Hey, hey Jesse. Hey, Jen. That's my mentor, Jesse. Okay. I'm working on a project that involves chemistry, biology, physics, and engineering, presenting DS Chem and microspherical interactions. What the heck is that? I agree. What the heck is that? Let's break it down, Ashley. Hey, this is a lab. Put on your coat. To know, scientists and engineers are interested in learning how to build useful structures using small particles called colloids, similar to micro-sized marbles. What are colloids? Glad you asked, Ashley. Colloids are known as the fourth state of matter. They are a type of mechanical mixture in which one substance is dispersed evenly throughout another, like soap or milk. So why do they matter? Well, we want to get the colloids in specific geometries for use, but they are pretty small, so it would take a whole lot of time and concentration to do so. Is that where... Yes, that's where self-assembly comes in. Self-assembly occurs when a disordered system collects into a pattern. A simple example of this can be shown if you put seven Cheerios into a bowl. The Cheerios self-assemble into a close-packed hexagonal structure. That's... Hey, that's my other colleague, Tish. She works in the lab across the hall. We were just talking about self-assembly and proteins. That's, that's so scientific! The dots you speak of are connected by DSCAM proteins. DSCAM stands for Down Syndrome Cell Adhesion Molecule. It is an unusual protein, comes from the Drosophila fly, and binds to itself. Isn't that great? It says here that this camp has 19,000 isoform variations. Hey, how do you know that? I stole your lab notebook. In my project, I want to study how to turn DS cam binding on and off and see what structures colloidal aggregations form. Like little Legos. Exactly like little Legos. Okay, guys, come on. Stay with me. I'm here. In my lab, I grow cells. This is where I purify my protein so that I can use it. Then I do a cross-linking reaction and test the concentration of my proteins. That's a lot. Not finished yet. Don't it look cool? Okay. This is my laser. I use it for static and dynamic light scattering. I test my solution to see how evenly dispersed the particles are. But that's not all. My favorite part is, is observing my protein on my baby. Yo, what? My baby! Come on, let's go see her. Okay. Welcome to my microscope. I love her. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> Under the microscope, I can test colloidal aggregation and browning in motion. What? You know, random movement. I want to see how DS cam moves on the beads. This part is very important because I want to see under what condition the bond breaks. Here guys, look at the screen. Here's some DS cam moving now. So you want to destroy the aggregate? No, silly. I want to build with them. Reverse the binding. Make new structures as if I had Legos. Ow! So what can we do with that? Now, a long time from now, Microsized aggregates can be used to build things like photonic crystals, which are used for optical computing. But anyways, now do you all understand what I do? Yes! You use nanometer-sized proteins. <coughs> From flies. <coughs> that you put on micro-sized colloids. <coughs> 
to eventually build cool and significant structures for a variety of uses. Wow, that was great guys. You really got it. Okay, enough of this nano talk. Let's talk about my project. Rise up this morning. <laughs>